For me, the best part of the day is always the early morning open shift. Everything is fresh, it's clean, we get to dial in some super delicious coffees and hopefully get one in before we let the outside world in. Today, I'm hanging out with Georgia at our Sydney espresso bar to find out what her process is behind the scenes. So Georgia, we've been able to pull you away from the bar for a quick chat. I want to find out what your process is for setting up the espresso bar in the morning. What's the first thing that you do? Do you have a nice little sneaky coffee? What is what is your steps? Absolutely not. There's lots of work to do. I will come in, I will unlock the door, turn the lights on. So I'd turn on both grinders, I'd put the beans in. Don't touch that yet though, I'd turn the machine off eco mode. And then I'll open up the doors because um, the temperature differences inside and outside can have a, a big effect on the coffee when I, when I do open up. So I like to let that air circulate. Um, then I'll put some music on, which is arguably the most important step. So then I turn on my Uber milk. The Uber milk is an automatic milk frother. It draws milk out of this big container that we've got in the fridge. So that needs to be filled up with milk. Then I prep all of the small items, you know, filling my chocolate shaker, stocking up lids and cups. And then by the time I've finished that, it's usually, you know, my machine and my grinders are ready to go. So I will season the machine. That literally means running a couple of shots through the machine first thing and you don't drink them at all. You want to make sure there's a little bit of coffee oils in there. It also stops any chance of um, chemicals from the, the cleaning the day before going into somebody's cup of coffee. Yeah, that would so, not be good. <laughs> yeah, so seizing the machine, you always seize it and then you throw out those shots. Then I'll set up my knock tube and scales and stuff like that. And then once I've got my scales there, I'm ready to dial in the coffee. So. I will run a few shots through, you know, obviously checking dose, the weight of the espresso and the time. If that's running correctly to my recipe, then I will taste it. Um, and if it needs a little tweaking, I'll do that depending on like, you know, the date. So you don't like taste the coffee straight out of the machine. You actually break it down, dial it in as close as you can to your recipe and Before then taste your coffee. Yeah. yeah. Right. Why, why, why do you sort of approach coffee in that manner? Because the recipe is usually a good starting point. That's usually what tastes good. I won't need to, I found that recipe specific to that coffee. So I won't need to change that very often. You know, it's only on days where like the coffee might be a little fresher than usual or a little older um, that I'll need to tweak it a little bit. You know, maybe make it run a couple of seconds longer or shorter or um, adjust the dose a little bit. Um, yeah. Do you have to keep dialing in your coffee throughout the day or is it like just set it once, you're good for the whole day? Uh, yes, especially on days where the temperature uh, and the humidity are, are pretty haywire. You know, I get a lot of questions. Customers come in, they're like, how many coffees do you drink a day? And I, I don't know how to answer that question because I'm constantly, you know, quality controlling, tasting espressos all throughout the day. Um, just making sure that it's still tasting good. <laughs> so how many coffees do you work with on bar that go through the espresso machine? Okay, so we work with two different blends. We use one on alternative milks and one on our dairy-based coffees. And then we use a single origin for espressos and long blacks. And then we also use a filterist single origin for the batch brew. We use a Marco brew. There's lots of different batch brewers that you can use to make a batch brew, but the Marco brew is pretty straightforward. I'll put the water in. You need to wet the paper to make sure there's no papery taste in the, in the coffee because a lot of compounds in that paper will come through unless it's pre-wet. Then last thing I do is grind and, and weigh the coffee that I'm popping in. And yeah, and then it drips through and I'll pop it in a carafe for, to serve everyone. You mentioned before that you actually use two different blends, one for alternative milks and one for dairy coffee. Yeah. Is there reasoning behind that? Why do we use two different coffees? Our wild blend, which we use on alternative milks, it's, it's a bit more out there than a lot of other coffee blends. So it has a really distinct sweet flavor, you know, uh, rock melon and sweet candy. So for alternative milks that generally have like quite a distinctive flavor, it tends to go well because it cuts through that distinctive flavor of the alternative milk better. So the one we use for the dairy milk, it's a bit of a crowd pleaser. So milk, chocolate, orange flavor notes, much more like a typical coffee than the wild is. The single origins are usually roasted for 
black coffee. So with a lot of them, you know, sometimes you'll get a single origin that has that nice bit of body, but typically they don't have enough body to be able to cut through the milk the same way that a blend does. Georgia, thank you so very much for letting us be able to tear you away from the espresso bar and get an inside look behind what a barista does uh, behind the espresso bar. But definitely guys, let us know down in the comments, would you like to see more of what happens behind the scenes when it comes to coffee? Until next time, stay stoked.